two things that are important to know. Well, one is that, for example, if I have four documents like D1, D2, D3, and D4 on the slide, right? Uh, these are very small documents. You can think of a lot more words for each document, a paragraph, a tweet, a document like a book, whatever it is that you're interested in analyzing will be a document. What you do to do a term by document matrix is our document by term matrix is that you put all the documents here in the rows and all the unique words here up in the columns. And then for each one of these documents, you say, for example, how many times the word appears in the document. For example, the first document, the cow, the appears twice. Here, once, the, and then another the for the moon. Cow appears one, jumped appears one, and so on and so forth. For more on this, you can watch the previous videos. But once you have this document matrix, right, another interesting thing comes up, right, is you can do document similarity using something called cosine similarity, which is also addressed in a different video, but suffice to say, you can do how similar, you can gauge how similar each document is to each other, for example, right? Now, one thing that comes up is, well, okay, I can know how documents are similar, but what about knowing which words are related to each other? So for that, I'm going to jump very quickly into a different set of slides here. What if I want to do the similarity between, say, word 3, 6, and 8? Now, you notice these coefficients have changed. This is because uh, I did something on them, but it's not relevant. The important part is, how do you get the similarity between words? How words are similar? Well, look at this. Look at this observation. Documents are vectors going on the on the on the rows of the matrix but words are also vectors the difference is that they go down the columns so we can basically transpose this matrix transposing means make the columns be rows and the rows be columns and you end up with something like this where the document name is up in the columns and the rows are the words and now you have jumped like this o'leary's like this words in the rows and you can do the same cosine similarity that you use for determining which documents were similar to determine which words are similar. If you're still wondering about these coefficients, well, they come from a process called TFIDF, which um, is also treated in a different video. Now, but suffice to say, now you have words in the rows and some coefficients in these or some weights in these uh, cells. So you can use cosine similarity just as you would a document, but for words. Now, another way of thinking about this is that now that we can have a word by document matrix, right? What is in a word? What's the meaning of a word? One can think, for example, the meaning of a word is an average of the meaning of all passages in which they appear, which is well, very similar to what we've been doing for document similarity, but also the meaning of a document or a passage is the average meaning of the words that it contains. And we're going to deal with that intuition. So for example, if we have a new document, D5, O'Leary's cow on the moon, right? We just look at the words, O'Leary's cow on the and moon, right? We can look at those words here and then why do I have jumped here? I don't know, but it shouldn't be highlighted. Now, what I can do is then add averages for each of these words. So for example, for the first column, the average is 0 plus 0 0.42 plus 2 plus 0 plus 0 divided by 5. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 words, right? The 5 words of the document. Then for the second column, again, I add these coefficients and divide by five, because it's five words in the document. Remember the word jumped is uh, erroneously highlighted here. And if I average these things, document five, I get an average of 0 0.74, 0 0.403, 0, and 0 0.24 for each one of the different documents. So I can get a vector of the word do of document five, my vector could be this one. So although I've never seen document five, I can still generate a vector for it. So this would be the idea that the average of the words of the document 
define a vector for the document. And that, that's, pretty, um, that's pretty good and it, it works very well in practice when you want to do document similarity. Now, <clears throat> let's say you have some words that are related now. Let's say you have um, nine documents. This is coming from a paper, a, a seminal paper on latent semantic analysis from 1990. Let's say you have four documents of computer science and, um, and uh, uh, human computer interaction and three documents on graph theory, which are, you know, theoretical computer science. So you have here, right, a word by document matrix of these, doc of these documents. Now, I eliminated words like the, a, of, for, because they don't really carry any meaning. So I just put the the words that carry some meaning and it's mostly nouns and with that i put the frequency in which they appear in each one of these documents okay so uh here if we look at say for example the relationship between a couple of words right so between human and user which are similar they're used in similar context so uh, human and user are used in similar context and then, um, say, for example, human and minors or user and minors, which are used in very different contexts, right? I should have a relationship. However, if I do the similarity between these word vectors, I get that between human and user and between user and minors, for example, the similarity is zero, meaning there's no similarity between these things. And that is not right. The word human and the word user are used with similar words. OK, so uh, that that is the important part, right? That's the important thing to notice. They're used with similar words. So, for example, uh, the word user appears in document two, which uses com computer, right? And the word human appears in document one, which also uses computer. So there might be a way, perhaps, that in which looking at the context and the words that co-occur with say human and user the words that co-occur with each other that gives me the context in which these words are used and that context should be somewhat related for example uh, cat and dogs if used in pet documents documents about pets well cat and dog are somewhat related they're not synonyms but they're related so how can we capture that intuition well welcome to latent semantic analysis which is a fully automatic uh, mathematical slash statistical technique for extracting and inferring relations of expected contextual usage of words in passages of discourse or in documents. So again, is this idea that words also carry some weight because of the context they're used in, okay? Not just whether they're present or not, but if there's a context that use, that if there are two con that contexts that are similar, well, words related to those contexts should be similar as well. Uh, because this here is a matrix, algebra provides a matrix operation that can help us with us with this. The first thing though that we need to understand here uh, that we need to uh, get to is um, decomposition. Decomposition meaning means that, for example, if there's a number x, I can decompose it into several numbers. So, for example, I can decompose it into C divided by M plus D, for example. That's a decomposition. I'm decomposing X in three factors, C, M, and D. And we can see that this works. For example, uh, 150 can be decomposed, or 150, yeah, what can be decomposed into 300 divided by 2 plus zero in which case d is zero c is 300 and m is two so i find these numbers in the decomposition right and then i can um i can decompose a number into other numbers well we can do the same thing with matrices singular value decomposition if one is one kind of decomposition where a matrix is decomposed into three factors a uh, a is the original matrix, can be decomposed into U, sigma, and V transpose. So A is our original matrix. U will be a matrix that has to do with the words in the document. Let's put it that way. V is a matrix that has to do with the documents in the, in the, 
in, uh, in our in our um, in our a by a matrix, and then sigma has to do with coefficients or with weighing each column for these matrices. Okay, so each column and row for these matrices. So that's going to be our decomposition. Now, if we multiply u sigma and v and we transpose v and multiply it with this, we're going to get the same original matrix. However, we can do something else. So for this, let me give you again the example of, um, let me, I'm sorry, let me give you again the example of this decomposition. So if you have a number that say <clears throat> this, right? Well, if I change the value of D, or if I take away D altogether, or if I truncate it, let's say I subtract one from each one of these numbers, I will get I won't get X again if I do this. If I do M divided by C plus D, I won't get X, but I'll get something close. And this idea of approximating a decomposition is what we're interested in. And here's how you do it. This is this is how you do it. So let's do we do SVD or singular value decomposition with vectors. So we have our matrix, uh, word by document matrix right here, words and documents. We have to represent this somehow. I'm going to use Python here, code in Python to teach you how to do this. It is quite easy. So you need something that can deal with math and that is NumPy. You export it as NP, so then you can call it as NP. And then you create the matrix. The matrix is just a two-dimensional list, if you will, inside the np.matrix command. This here is exactly like this. And then we perform SVD, and that is super easy. SVD, re re remember, it returns three matrices, U, Sigma, and V transpose. And you just call the command to do SVD on the matrix that you actually have. Now, these are the matrices that they, that it returns. But remember, if we multiply these three matrices, I mean, transposing this one, if we multiply these three matrices, then we're going to get the same original matrix. That's not useful. So how can we approximate? Well, one way is, is called dimensionality reduction, is getting rid of a lot of columns and rows in these matrices. For example, we can reconstruct this, which is, remember, the original matrix at 2 by 9, but we're going to reconstruct uh, an approximation of the original matrix and we're going to slice the first two rows on the U matrix a 2 by 2 on the diagonal matrix Sigma and the first two rows in this matrix right but because it's transposed then this is going to become 2 by 9 and then you can actually perform the multiplication to slice these matrices here's the code to slice them uh, this VH is actually VT is our VT variable from before, and UP, SP, and VP are basically the sliced matrices. Okay, U colon comma zero two means all the rows and only the first two columns. NP diag S zero two means just get the a diagonal matrix of a two by two from here from S, and then VT not VH VT colon zero two means well get the all the rows and only the first two columns of the matrix VT, or in this case. So I slice this, and then I multiply these matrices. So the resulting matrix is going to be UP times SP times VP transpose. And I will get a matrix just like the original one, a 12 by 9, but now the coefficients have changed. There are very few that are zero, like this one. They all have something. And if we look at, say, human and user, a cosine similarity, now we get that human and user are 0 0.89 because they're used in very similar contexts. So somehow they're related. And then user and minors is negative 0 0.27. So they have a negative relationship. So where humans are used, the word minors is definitely not used, right? So because it has to do with graphs. So now we get much accurate representations of the words and their meaning. And that is one of the beauties of singular value decomposition and latent semantic analysis. And now you also know how to do 